have uh, in-house expert Sanjay ji joining us in the studios NDTV's uh, Sanjay Pugalia thanks very much for being with us we've had to drag you from NDTV India and get you on to 24/7 so uh, we want to begin not only me Sanjay yes, ji we also have you. other yes. wonderful guests Aarti Jaira joining us a political social analyst and Sanjay Kumar CSDS somebody who has helped us understand so many uh, data related points thank you so much for joining us uh, Mr Pugalia you Sanjay ji you have done two wonderful interviews and uh, tell us uh, right from the beginning you kept telling us that there's no contest so i would want you to elaborate on this was there no contest right from the beginning the biggest weakness we all have is to say uh, i told you so so when we began mm -hmm. coverage of this election i did begin by saying that this is the most historic election but most boring because it is too predictable and that's what exit poll numbers are again showing in between there was some noise some conversations in certain echo chambers and bubbles nothing has worked out the way they thought and we tried to discuss that is something uh, changing has something changed is there a wave is there an undercurrent is there a uh, dissonance are we getting the public mood wrong i think everything has been proven wrong uh, it was expected that bjp will do well uh, only because opposition could not really put up a good fight mm. they definitely put up a good fight on social media and they have one hands down there yes. but this big democratic exercise that we were hoping uh, that opposition shall perform it has not performed right. and bjp again is uh, uh, seems to be getting a uh, very very strong endorsement by the electorate absolutely sanji but there's been a lot of talk about ram rashan representation you know this these are the three biggest tools that the bjp has had and this i would want sanjay kumar to also talk about because up results the exit poll seem to say that bjp could be improving its tally of 62 seats of 2019 so mr bugalia do you think this up thing that people kept talking about that the pda will wor work at some point purvanchal will twist maybe that really didn't work probably if the exit polls uh, are to be true yeah akhilesh could never capture the imagination that was the biggest weakness of up congress uh, is a non player in the whole state and mayawati went solo we will have to actually see on fourth what happens what is the vote share of mayawati and that will tell us a bigger story how our uh, state up and how our society uh, is thinking and what are they thinking but yeah up uh because of the combination of factors was always very favorable for bjp and that's what these exit poll numbers are also showing that they are going to do pretty well yes sir right but if you if you if you look at the poll of exit polls it's it's looking at uttar pradesh very interestingly because i think the highest number as far as uttar pradesh is concerned is being given by the republic poll which is pitting it at around 69 to 74 many would say that they would have hoped to do better i will skip this answer and we will bother <laughs> sanjay ji with this and you know uh, sanjay ji sanjay how also, do you look at yes, it yes mr kumar they're also saying that you know uh. bsp may not win even a single seat last time the party won so i mean like almost 10 seats so clearly that was uh, exceptional no i think if you it's very difficult to compare 2019 and 2024 with regard to up because in 2019 election there was an alliance of samajwadi party and uh, samajwadi party and the bsp this time bsp is contesting se um, election separately alone so last time bsp had won 10 seat the bsp seemed to be performing very badly i don't think there is any disagreement about that we everybody saw that performing very badly right from the beginning so bsp the indication is that bsp is not picking up any seat from up i am not surprised about that but i would be surprised to see if bjp is reaching anywhere close to 69 or 70 which some of the polls are indicating my own sense was that bjp may not be able to increase the tally in up that's so that was my sense but let's at this moment we have no choice but to at least go along with most of the exit poll because most of the exit poll indicates bjp is improving the tally in up Arti Charat, you know, a lot of us did talk about the language that was used in the elections, the discourse. You know, a lot of it was centered around reservation. Reservation became so important, the sanctity of the constitution, democracy. But really, people seem to be voting on very different lines. Or what is it that you think? Well, you know, I mean, let's uh, you know sort of put the health warnings in these yes, elections. Yes, these are just polls. exit polls. Yes. Uh, but yes, I mean, um, you know, there was this buzz that. the opposition had managed to create a fear amongst particularly amongst dalits yeah. about uh, the constitution being changed the reservation policy being scrapped and so on and so forth so i i mean if these numbers are correct clearly that uh, strategy did not work 
and you know Dalits have voted uh, you know maybe this whole thing of Modi or a sense of nationalism uh, you know this whole caste divide yeah. and so on that we kept talking about in UP that you know I mean Akhilesh tried some new experiments and uh, yeah. you know with caste and so on and you know maybe all that didn't work and it did not materialize and uh, you know just like in 2019 there was a kind of overall nationalist uh, you know feeling uh, which drove people to the uh, you know to vote the way they did maybe this time also there was that nationalist feeling uh, you know which was centered in Modi right. in the in the whole image of uh, you know brand Modi and uh, you know people have voted for that right. I want to so. I want to just I, I know the Uttar Pradesh numbers have just come in and you know everyone's sort of obsessing about Uttar Pradesh but I think one of the most interesting aspects at least as far as these exit polls uh, Sanjay Pugalia, if you'd agree with me or not, is going to be Bengal. The fact that it was always neck and neck, even if you look at the vote share in 2019. And right now, uh, what we are seeing as for the data that's coming in with a lot of health warnings is that the BJP is ahead of the TMC according to three polls. Wow. Yeah, that was the sense, anecdotally also everyone got and uh, the people we spoke to were saying the same thing, that BJP will maintain or actually improve the tally. Uh, they fought very well as far as TMC is concerned. But the ability to get your supporter to the booth and convert into vote yes. is much sharper with BJP compared to uh, other parties, even though TMC is pretty cadre-led party. Yeah. But still, I think West Bengal is a kind of uh, undergoing through a significant change and that is what exit poll numbers are reflecting. But if you look at Karnataka... But look at this, still it is neck to neck. Yeah, yeah it, it is, is neck, neck to neck, neck. that's what I said. Yes. But Karnataka seems to be a different story altogether because that was the laboratory of the opposition's welfare. You know, you had uh, Congress guarantees, you had Siddharamaya's guarantees, free bus travel for women, you had, uh, you know, this whole Lakshmi Yojana where every <coughs> woman, Mahalakshmi Yojana where every woman gets about 1000 rupees. But you know, the numbers, exit poll numbers are presenting BJP in a very good spot. They are saying that the BJP could be retaining its uh, 23 to 22 seats. The Congress could be making gains, but just about 4 to 5 seats, whereas uh, Congress was hoping for much more. So if these numbers are correct, uh, I think there is another history being um, uh, made here, which is that BJP has always done very, very well in all Lok Sabha uh, elections of the past many decades. So that is one point. We also thought that uh, because uh, Congress had just won the state, BJP may lose a yeah. few seats. But that may not be happening only because outside Gujarat, mm. the Modi premium vote is highest in Karnataka. Yeah. Mm. Professor Kumar, would you like to respond to that? The Karnataka Professor, result, the exit, uh, exit poll yes, results. Yes, actually, uh, if you could just you know, look at it in terms of a larger picture, Vasudha, because if you look at the 129 seats in the south, uh, and you look at how the BJP performed in 2019, it was 29 out of 129 yeah. in 2019. Uh, given the fact that the BJP is now opening its account in three states, do you think that this very concerted South-focused strategy of the Prime Minister has actually paid in rich dividends? Or do you think that this is, this is again with a lot of health warnings right now and you see the situation on the ground to be very No, different? I don't think uh, I would put a lot of health... Uh, uh, like uh, warnings on these estimates. Okay. I think right from the beginning, there was a sense that BJP is making a lot of uh, effort to make inroads in the southern state. Hmm. And except for Karnataka, where there were opinions, or I think shared belief that in Karnataka, BJP would be losing. The exit poll indicate that they are not losing much in Karnataka. If they are losing, they are losing only by a couple of seats. But except for Karnataka, I think there was a shared view, view that BJP will improve its tally in Andhra, hmm. Telangana, if not tally, but at least the vote share in uh, Tamil Nadu and, and in Kerala. I think all the exit polls are indicating that BJP is expanding its footprint in all the southern state. We still don't know whether BJP will be losing in Karnataka compared to 2019 right. or BJP is improving. You know, improving very difficult because, because BJP had won 
25 seats last time and this time they are contesting only 25. You know, Vasudha, I want you to come in here because Vasudha covers the party and you of course reported on this very extensively that this was all part of the plan. I mean, these numbers that we are seeing right now shouldn't surprise those within the BJP because this is perhaps uh, what at least in they've the, been working yes. towards. It was a very concerted strategy as far as the party Absolutely. And they were, they were very confident right from the beginning because they knew that Modi guarantee works. Yes. And, uh, you know, in some ways I also feel and I'd like to ask uh, this question to Aarti Jairat. In some ways you also feel that the BJP got a socio-political context of South of India right this time because I know that the vote share might increase, they may not really get that many seats but they're finally doing the Sengol outreach, the Prime Minister is going to Tiruvalluvar, he's, he's, he's presenting himself in a Veshti in the right way, it's not really offensive to a Tamilian. So do you, do you think that, that that is something that he has gotten it right? No, and uh, you know, as far as, particularly as far as Tamil Nadu is concerned, uh, he drew a lot of linkages with Kashi. Yeah. You know, they did that whole Tamil Samagam yes. and, uh, you know, there were sort of trips going back and forth, exchange of food festivals and, uh, you know, sort of literary festivals and so on. So, I mean, he made a very, very uh, concerted outreach to Tamil Nadu. Hmm. And, you know, so the way the BJP works is very interesting. Uh, you know, it has been focusing on the East for since the last elections hmm. and this time in this elections you know it's paying them dividends at least that's what the yeah. exit polls suggest it started focusing on uh, you know the south only recently and so this time i mean apart from karnataka which has been their thing but this time they may not get those dividends but you know the bjp looks ahead yeah. they always plan ahead right so the, you know the next time around uh, you know, they may get those dividends that they're looking for right. because, you know, again, you know, the whole political situation in Tamil Nadu is so fluid. AIDMK is dying. <laughs> DMK is, you know, will obviously, have, they can't be a vacuum forever. You know, another party has to come in and the BJP seems to be the up and coming party over there. Okay. So, you know, we're all... These are all plans for the future because the BJP thinks ahead. Right. It doesn't think only for today. It thinks for tomorrow and even for day after. Right. Sanjay, also one question. What are your, if the numbers are to stand true, what would be your advice to the opposition? Because clearly there are things that the opposition has gotten wrong. Do you think that they could have started their campaign much earlier? Do you think that the seat sharing arrangement could have been reflected, uh, you know, maybe in January or maybe in December? And what do you think is the biggest disappointment? I mean, we're seeing these numbers. Sudha. No, just to add... Uh, whom, whom do you expect him to advise? Because opposition is not just one party; there are multiple <laughs> parties. And as Rain you know, and as you know, yeah. that two parties are fighting against each other in one state, but they form an alliance in the other state. So, what kind of? It's very difficult for anyone to give an advice. So, let's say, but Congress, Sanjay what, can you, what would you look at as the biggest disappointment? So, Sanjay ji, so can you, you, you all have made things very complex <laughs> for me. I will try to answer yes, by sir. saying that in Delhi, Vasudha, and pardon me for saying that. We have this very bad habit of advising a position <laughs> all the time for free. <laughs> I shall not do that. Yes. <laughs> but one thing I want to say here. BJP by its strategy and a position led by Congress uh, by its stupidity misled themselves to social media environment and they thought there is a fight building up. <laughs> they have misled themselves to such a fatal level, which is unbelievable. The biggest villain in the piece, of course, is Congress party because it was the leader. It did not handle the Indi India Alliance story well. They could have done better. When you, suppo you were supposed to distribute ticket and work on constituencies, you were doing your yatras in a very complex world, which people did not even Congress supporters could not understand. Now it is time for opposition and Congress party, learning, you are yeah. asking about learning, to think and imagine new ways how to say Jai Ram Ji to the old style of working of opposition party. Okay, okay. And some of the complex ideas like wealth redistribution, do you think some of those things could have been avoided? Because at the end of the day, you know, it's, it's an election for the masses. And these ideas could also be open to interpretation, which means people might get misled. Opposition led by Congress party does not have the ability to understand the change that India is going through. They are stuck in an old time warp. They are not able to com connect with the people and they are not able to get that language right. That is the problem. These are very old uh, rear uh, view mirror uh, ideas and they are not 
able to understand how Mr. Modi is working. If you want me to conclude on this point, I want to say what was the biggest story of this election? Yes. The one word is aspiration on which BJP worked. Modi led BJP worked very effectively and Congress just did not get that. Right. Their entire language was of anguish and grievance, not of hope and aspiration. Right.